welcome to New Blue FX Tips and Techniques. This is Ian Stark for New Blue. In this tutorial, we're going to take a look at the Reflection plugin from the Video Essentials 4 collection. Reflection is another great example of a New Blue plugin that does one thing very well and very easily. It, well, reflects things. But don't be fooled by its apparent simplicity, because under the hood there are lots of things to tweak and adjust to give us complete control over the end result. So let's dive straight in and see what we have to play with. For the first example, we'll start with a really simple still image, and we'll kick off by firing up the Reflection plugin. If I step through the presets, you can see how you can get some great results without doing anything more. But let's reset all values to zero so we can start with a clean slate. The plugin controls are grouped into five sections. Shape, which defines where your original clip goes. Image, which defines which part you see from your original clip and how it's to be scaled. Reflection, which quite obviously is where you'll adjust the reflection parameters. Background, which lets you adjust the colour and other attributes of the area behind your clip. And the final group, which lets you add and tweak water-like ripples into your reflection. Right, let's start to play around with the settings for our still image. Using the shape group, I can determine where in the frame my image is going to go. For this example, I'll just nudge it up a fraction. I'm also going to crop the image slightly in width and in height so it sits better in the frame. Finally, let's introduce a little perspective by rotating along the x-axis just a little. OK, that's a good start. So now let's look at the image control group and decide what and how much of the original picture I want to show. If I move it around, you can see how this will affect the frame. And for this example, I'm going to go all up close and personal and show just the bottom right portion of the picture. Well, this has now cut off the right side of the candle, but I can sort that out either by sliding it to the left a little or by adjusting the scale of the image so it fits better. I quite liked it at full scale, i.e. with a value of 1, so I'm just going to slip the image to the left slightly. I really like the black background, but just to show you how I can easily change it, let's turn it red and let's raise the opacity to 100. If you want to select a background colour from your image, then use the eyedropper. Let's revert to the black background, and now let's feather the edge of the image into the background, just to soften things up a little. That's great. Now I'm going to tweak the position of the reflection. You can get some interesting results using negative values, but for my example, I only want a small gap between the original image and the reflection. I'm going to drop the opacity of the reflection to 50, and I'm going to increase the fade or fall-off value so the reflection isn't so deep. You can get some very, very realistic reflection effects by tweaking these values, so do please play around and experiment. We'll cover the final group in this second example, which uses just a simple text clip. I've already set up my reflection parameters, so now let's animate them with a watery ripple. Firstly, I'll change the amplitude or the height of the ripples, then the length, and finally the speed. I can also adjust the direction of the ripples in the reflection, but I'm going to leave that set to the default value for now. And there you have it, an effect that once might have involved duplicating and inverting tracks and adding multiple effects can now be achieved in just a few clicks. Ever so simple to use and ever so effective. It's another example of a great time-saving plugin from New Blue. To find out more about the Reflection plugin or to see more tips and techniques tutorials, click to www.newbluefx.com. This is Ian Stark saying thanks for watching and learning a little bit about New Blue FX.